What's up guys? Welcome to the city of Wuhu in China, located by the famous Yangtze River. More importantly, the home of Cherry International and we're here to check out a new product of its sub-brand, the Jcool J8 PHEV. Let's start off with the front. I like how sleek, clean the front section looks like. You have the sleek headlamps, the large but honestly not oversized grille. This is round about the size of an Audi grille. The designer said he doesn't want the exterior to be too cluttered with superficial luxury details. And honestly, if you ask me, it is very easy on the eye, not just in terms of the details, but also the proportions. At both corners of the front bumper, you have vents to channel air towards the tire. And then on the side, you have large 20 inch wheels, PHEV badge here, retractable door handles, just like the J7, which will go on sale very soon. And at the rear, just like almost every car brand in the world at the moment, you have a single strip light bar that runs across the tailgate. I would say rather intricate 3D details on the rear light cluster. Now, even though it's marketed as a luxury SUV, it is also supposed to be a very capable off-roader. And I think the exterior design of the car actually reflects it, especially in the front section with really short overhangs to allow the car to climb up slopes with ease. Now, this is supposed to be a six-seater. So you have two seats in the front, two seats in the middle row, captain seats more specifically with the armrest over there as you can see and with the third row seats erected, there's still actually a decent amount of space in the boot. Even with the second row seat pushed back quite far, there's still I would say decent amount of leg room in the third row. To add to the practicality of it, you also have additional storage, cup holders on each side. Now, let's see what space is like with the third row seats folded flat. Wow, it's an incredible amount of space actually. I would say three full-size luggages, probably with still a bit of room left. All right, now let's get into the second row. But before that, you have a window shade over here. This is to open the door. This is the backup plan with, as you can see, plenty of storage space. Sony sound system, aircon vents on the side here, just like a BMW 5 Series. And let's see what legroom is like. Wow, okay, very generous at the moment. Let me see, push it forward a little bit more. This is just the right amount of space. And now let's climb to the back seat and see how much space we have. I really like SUVs or MPVs with the center aisle. It just makes getting to the third row a lot easier. Okay, so as you can see, the leg is touching the back of the second row seat. And in terms of headroom, I would say just nice. If I was any taller, it wouldn't be comfortable. So I think maybe for kids 12 and under, perfect. You have rear aircon controls with seat ventilation. Wow, I hope that feature arrives in Malaysia. Now let's check out the driver's seat. First things first, it's been highlighted that these front windows are actually double glazed. For a quieter cabin, I really like this somewhat horseshoe shaped dashboard design that extends towards the doors. You see it in cars like Jaguar and all that. These aircon vents look quite familiar. Well, at least they look good. And then over here, you have a wood panel again that extends towards the doors. That reminds me a lot of Mercedes Benz. What do you think about this design? Is it just nice or is it too much? Let me know in the comments. You have a wireless charging pad over here. Two cup holders drive mode controls, seat ventilation. Oh no, this is the seat heater. And you can actually opt 
to have it in full EV mode. That's good news, Apple CarPlay. Right, as for the sunroof, let's see how wide it opens. That's not too bad. Just don't put your kid out there, please. At least they have a shade. Now, interesting fact about the seats. They've actually designed these seats based on research done on NASA astronauts for the right posture. Wow! This is a sign of a premium vehicle allowing the rear passengers to move the front seat. Display is pretty crisp, very responsive. Over here, very similar to the J7. You have haptic controls on the steering wheel and I think I've taken enough time. There are media representatives from all over the world, like literally all over the world. All here to check out this car and a few others. As for the driving bit, even though it was a really short session, the impression was very positive. The acceleration was potent and smooth, and for something so big and heavy, it felt composed and controllable through the corners. This must be down to its adaptive suspension. It was also driven on a light off-road course, with rolling roads, an axle twister, basically low grip conditions to test its off-road abilities. Safe to say, it didn't struggle to find grip and overcame the obstacles easily and gracefully. Can't wait to spend more time with it in Malaysia. That's all for the very brief walk around on the outside and on the inside. A quick test drive of the new JQ J8 PHEV. I can't wait to tell you more about it when it arrives in Malaysia. Stay tuned.